Welcome back to the Brittany Hughes Show, everybody. Happy Thursday to you guys. So Governor Gavin Newsom out in California threatening to file kidnapping charges. You can't make this stuff up, y'all. Kidnapping charges against Florida Governor Ron DeSantis for reportedly sending two plane loads full of illegal aliens into Sacramento and dumping them on the front steps of a Catholic church because apparently... California is only a sanctuary when it's politically convenient, when it can be shoved into a political speech to gain points with the bleeding heart leftist crowd that thinks that hope and love and change is an actual policy that works. Turns out it's not. That's some common core math right there. Um, That's so much of the left's policy. That's so much of the left's agenda and their entire framework for 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 everything that they want to shove down Americans throats it's sort of based on this hippie idea that if we could all just hold hands and chew hemp together and sing kumbaya that the world would be a better place turns out that's not actually the way that it works turns out that countries actually don't do very well when they just bust open their borders and allow rampant illegal immigration and they don't know who's coming into their country or whether or not it's sustainable on the system that's supposed to then support all of those people that doesn't actually work that's why every single country on this planet has an immigration system has caps on the number of people who are allowed to come here has a process by which people are allowed to come into the country. Um, We're just apparently the only country in the entire world that's not actually expected to follow our own policy. And that's the way the left wants it. Open borders. That's what this administration has pushed now for two years. Open borders. We're just going to bust open the floodgates and let anybody come in We can't actually vet these people. We don't have documentation on these people. We have no way of ensuring that they're going to show up to their immigration hearings. And that's exactly what Gavin Newsom and the state of California have pushed now for years. But when they finally get what they're asking for, because some Republican governors have finally wised up to the game and stopped playing defense, you want them, you got them. You want rampant migration? You say that you're a sanctuary for everybody coming into this country illegally and flouting our laws? You want to give them all licenses and taxpayer cash? You go for it. We'll send them your way. And that's exactly what Florida did this week. Two planes, not even big planes, by the way. It was a total of about 17 illegal aliens that showed up on two separate planes to California who were dropped off basically outside of a Catholic church this week. 17, 17 people. And that's all it took for Gavin Newsom, who of course has his own political future in mind, obviously, to call DeSantis a pathetic little man and to threaten him openly with kidnapping charges. So the California government claims that these migrants were sent to California under false pretenses. Here's what Gavin Newsom had to say on Wednesday. I think I'm being generous, small and pathetic. Uh, Very generous. He's just weakness masquerading as strength. Yeah, he's flailing. Desperate for attention. Let's just level set here. Let's level set. Here's a governor from the state of Florida that is using taxpayer money And he had to go to another state to find people under false pretense. I don't think this, I know this. I talked to the migrants, lied to them, took them into another state by bus, and then took them on a chartered flight to Sacramento, lying to them that they had help on the other side, knocked on the door, and they left these migrants right there on the steps. What kind of human being does that? Ron DeSantis is going to be landing in this city later this month to hold a fundraiser for his presidential campaign. Should he be worried that law enforcement officials in this state are going to arrest him when he walks off the plane? Now we're getting into hyperbole. The bottom line is we're for accountability. I mean, I don't think it's hyperbole. You're the one raising the issue of criminality, potentially. We Potentially. Yeah. And we have to do the investigation. So one, it's ready aim, fire, not ready, fire, aim. That's his approach. Our approach is to seek first to collect all the facts. But on the basis of facts of evidence that were provided, and by the way, I didn't take this in a third party frame. I was there with these folks directly and listened to how they, I mean, you know, human beings used as pawns for a guy's political advancement. That's pretty sad and pathetic. And, uh, And so 
I, I take this very seriously. And I, as I said, we are not Martha's Vineyard. I love Martha's Vineyard. We're not Martha. This is California, fourth or fifth largest economy on planet Earth. We mean business. And so Ron DeSantis should know that. And everyone that's been part of this, they may have more direct accountability and culpability, should know we mean business. And we're not backing away uh, from getting the facts and holding those accountable if they broke the laws of the state of California. So here he's not alleging that Florida told these people that they were headed somewhere else and simply sent them to California. He's not alleging that Florida officials told these people, look, we're going to send you guys to, you know, Utah, and then ended up taking them to California. That's not what he's saying. What he's saying is that Florida officials told these migrants that help would be waiting for them when they arrived in California, which quite frankly is exactly what Newsom and the state of California has been saying all along. I don't really see what Newsom's problem is here with Florida allegedly telling all of these people, look, we're going to take you to California. We're going to leave you there. And there's going to be all kinds of assistance waiting for you on the other end. Because that's exactly what Newsom has been saying. Here's Newsom back in 2018 telling Donald Trump on Twitter, who of course was then president, California is a sanctuary state. We believe in the power of diversity. We have defied and resisted the xenophobic, hateful policies of your administration at Every term, we will do it again. Here's Newsom in his own inauguration speech vowing that California will be a sanctuary to all who seek it. Together, let us build a, a house stronger than the coming storms, yet open to the world. A house that provides shelter to all who need it and sanctuary to all who seek it. Where opportunity abounds for all who will work for it. A true California house, sun-kissed, Dream soaked and built with a sweat of honest work. We will not have one house for the rich and one for the poor or one for the native born and one for the rest. We will build one house for one California. Sounds to me like he's offering plenty of assistance. You want to come here? We will happily welcome you. We will greet you at the door. We will provide resources for you. We will be a sanctuary to you. If you need assistance, California is here to provide it. So I don't see the problem with Florida telling these people, if in fact that is what happened, Florida telling these people, we're going to take you to California. They're going to help you out. I mean, the California Senate, in fact, the California State Senate just approved a bill that would allow $300 a week in taxpayer cash to go to out-of-work illegal aliens who simply self-attest that they're unemployed. California could soon pay illegal immigrants to not work. It's the latest state incentive to pay unemployed illegal immigrants up to $300 a week. Here's a lesson, by the way, in how to not do math. This is a state that is currently facing a $31.5 billion deficit this year. And it is hemorrhaging people left, right, and sideways, actually to places like Florida. They're fleeing like the Hoover Dam leaks after an earthquake. And, and this is a state that wants to start cutting checks to people willy-nilly, like it's got an endless pile of monopoly cash to play with, um, to people who shouldn't be in the country in the first place. That's exactly what the brilliant minds in California, and these are the same unparalleled geniuses, by the way, who brought us all of the human poop and dirty syringes and homeless camps, as far as, you know, the, the smog-filled eye can see all across their state, them. This is what they've decided to do. The California Senate last week approved sending $300 a week checks to illegal aliens, provided, of course, that they self-report report being uh, eligible for them. Here's how it works. Under Senate Bill 227, unemployment fund officials would be banned from asking for claimants' social security numbers or contacting their current or past employers to verify that the claimant is, in fact, out of work. So, for context, California is home to about 5 million illegal aliens who are not technically authorized to work, so this should go very well. Um, you're not allowed to ask anymore for a person's social security number to actually verify that they are, in fact, legal and unemployed. Can't do that. Paves the way 
for rampant fraud, by the way, but also paves the way for millions of illegal aliens to start collecting taxpayer-funded checks. If you think all of that, by the way, sounds like a fantastic way to defraud the taxpayers, you would be correct. Um, all this bill requires is that an unemployment applicant self-attests that they've earned at least $1,300 or worked a minimum of 93 hours over the past three months. So to verify that claim, they can show certain documents that include tax returns or get this, transaction logs on payment apps like Venue, Venmo, or transportation receipts that simply demonstrate a pattern of commuting. As long as you've got a 7-Eleven and a McDonald's receipt in your bank statement, and you can prove tacitly or, 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 or at least fudge that you've been commuting to and from work where you've worked at least a few hours over the past three months, that's all California is looking for. Don't actually have to provide your social security number. Uh, your current or past employer doesn't have to verify that you are not in fact working. Um, none of that. You just have to self-attest. And this is going to apply to millions of illegal aliens who may be out of work. None of this can be faked, by the way, I'm sure. So the first question, of course, that any sensible person might ask is how a state that is eyeball deep in debt plans to find all the taxpayer cash to fork over to illegal aliens who did not even bother to come into this country in the first place. That would be question number one. You have no money. You are billions, tens of billion dollars in debt, which should clue you in, by the way, to how craptastic your policies are, might want to do a little look-see at the screw-ups that you've already committed that have landed you in this problem in the first place. Maybe all of these support systems, maybe all of this welfare garbage, maybe chucking cash out like t-shirts at a sporting event, maybe that's not the smartest idea. I don't know. $31.5 billion in debt, clearly not doing something all that right. But of course, they're not introspective enough to think about that. The second question, of course, is just how deep this seemingly bottomless pit is going to go, considering the Biden administration ended Title 42 and has opened the floodgates to illegal immigration with absolutely no sign of stemming the tide anytime soon. You're now saying that you're going to hand out taxpayer-funded unemployment checks to illegal aliens with no way of knowing how many illegal aliens are going to actually end up in your state which might be part of the reason why Gavin Newsom is so freaked out that Florida is sending even more. Also, by the way, Golden Staters, if you happen to be out in California and you're hearing all of this and you, uh, you have a little bit of fear and trepidation, don't worry. The experts are in charge, just letting you know. Uh, California's Unemployment Insurance uh, Fund, it, this is the same agency, by the way, that was defrauded of about $31 billion tax dollars during the botched COVID bailout fiasco. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's uh, It's a fund that's also, by the way, about $20 billion in debt. Same exact agency, they're going to be the ones in charge of handing out these checks. So I'm sure that they've figured it out. I'm sure they've got all their ducks in a row now. Nothing could possibly go wrong here. Um, all of this sounds a lot like helping illegal aliens to me. I mean, if Florida is telling illegal aliens, we're going to take you to California, there's tons of assistance waiting for you. If that's truly what happened, doesn't sound to me like that was false pretenses. Doesn't sound to me like that was a lie. Because they're handing out all kinds of aid. Of course, assistance might not be waiting for you if you count on traditional health insurance, if you're one of millions of Americans who still pays exorbitant premiums for health coverage that you don't need only for your money to go to subsidize other people's medical procedures like abortion or transgender surgery for kids. Share Healthcare can help. So I'm partnering with Share Healthcare to let people know about their affordable money-saving alternative to traditional health insurance. Share Healthcare is not health insurance. It's a cost-sharing program between like-minded people who don't want to compromise their beliefs by paying for other people's medical care that does not align with their Judeo-Christian values. And with plans that start as low as $149 a month, Share Healthcare can help you save money without violating your conscience. 
For more information, visit sharehealthcare.com. Enter the referral code MRCTV23. That's sharehealthcare.com, MRCTV23, and find a plan that's right for you and your family today. So now Newsom wants to claim kidnapping. Ron DeSantis has kidnapped all of these people, forced them onto a plane after, I don't know, knocking them out with a rock or something, forced them onto a plane, took them to California against their will, dumped them in this place that cannot help them, and that's apparently enough to uh, consider kidnapping charges, like he shoved them in the back of a white panel van or something. Of course, that's not what the Florida Division of Emergency Management says or quite frankly, how the situation looks in a video that they released that appears to show migrants happily filling out waivers and partying with big smiles on their faces all the way to California. You've got migrants filling out papers saying that they want to go to California and understand that that's where they're being taken and that they agree to it. You have migrants waving and smiling and giving a thumbs up on the bus. You have them getting off the plane with big old grins on their faces saying that they're so grateful that they're in California. Uh, We have video where they told Californian officials that greeted them that they were treated actually very well by people in Florida, that all of this was on the up and up. Um, Even still, uh, Newsom wants us to believe that this this was kidnapping. Now, DeSantis, for his part, has responded that he does not understand, and quite frankly, I'm with him on this, why blue cities and blue states are fighting so hard to not take in the migrants that they claimed they wanted. Here was Newsom's, or here, excuse me, was uh, DeSantis's response. So here's the thing. These sanctuary jurisdictions are part of the reason we have this problem, because they have endorsed and agitated for these types of open border policies. They have bragged that they are sanctuary jurisdictions. They attack the previous administration's efforts uh, to try to have border security. And so that's the policies they've staken out. Uh, and then what? When, when they have to deal with some of the fruits of that, they all of a sudden become very, very upset about that. Uh, well, what are these people having to deal with um, here? I don't see the sympathy for them. I actually have a bit of a problem with DeSantis on this, quite frankly. I've got a little bit of a bone to pick with him. I don't think he was entirely right. As a matter of fact, I think that he made one massive screw up, particularly when it comes to this latest plane uh, of people that he flew into California. The problem that I have with this is that the planes that took these illegal aliens to California were taxpayer-funded private jets, which frankly, to me, seems very fiscally irresponsible. How about this? How about we load up a few 757s from like Spirit Airlines or something? You know, like the discounted 5 a.m. flights where, you know, there's no Wi-Fi and I don't know, people bring like live chickens and somebody has to volunteer to be the co-pilot, like one of those flights, you know? Why don't we just load that sucker up, zip that onto Sacramento or San Francisco or Los Angeles or wherever? Quite frankly, I don't care if it's Gavin Newsom's own freaking backyard. Why don't we load those up and let's start an express lane into these blue states because they're the ones that signed us all up for this mess. This was your policy. You ranted and raved against Donald Trump for four years and called him a Nazi for taking some measure to enact border security in this country. Again, we still had illegal immigration under Donald Trump. It is not like he put the brakes on and slammed the border shut and nobody could get in. He did, however, fight tooth and nail to try to enact at least the policies that courts allowed him to, to try to stem the tide, got away with a little bit more than he probably would have had it not been for COVID and Title 42. And California and Gavin Newsom and that whole entire crowd spent the entire four years screaming that he was a xenophobic, racist Nazi for his trouble. And anybody who supported border security simply hated foreign people. So you wanted this. You asked for this. 
As far as I'm concerned, a couple of private planes with a grand total of 17 people is not nearly enough. We should be dumping them in droves. If New York City and Chicago and Baltimore and D.C. are hemming and hawing over the, what, few thousand people that they've gotten, that pales into com in comparison to what border towns deal with every single day in this country. Sit down and shut up. You ain't seen nothing yet. I would be renting out jumbo jets. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm not really sure that DeSantis is doing enough. I think that this was a, 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 a somewhat weak sauce move in terms of actual quantity and making an impact in that respect, but it certainly got Newsom's attention and it certainly made the national news um, because blue governors and mayors, they don't actually care about sending migrants to other places, by the way that they don't necessarily want to be, um, they do this all the time. Blue governors, Democrat governors, Democrat mayors, when they end up getting a whole bunch of people that they don't want, see, again, because they're all about migrants and they're all about being a sanctuary till they actually have to put up or shut up, and then they don't actually want to be. They cannot put their money where their mouth is, mostly because they don't have any money, because they've spent it all on other garbage with the stupid policies that they enact. So what do they do? They end up shipping these people out, just like Florida is doing. This is what's really interesting here. So the New York town of Colony, this is a village in Albany, by the way, it's a suburb. It's got a population of about 7,700 people. Um, very, very small little area, very small little suburb. Colony has filed a lawsuit against New York City in the state capital of, of Albany after Mayor Eric Adams of New York City started busing migrants into the town with no warning in the middle of the night. Interesting. Interesting what we have here. So on the one hand, Ron DeSantis is not allowed to fly people to California, even though California is the state that claims to be super pro-migrant and we're a sanctuary and we welcome everybody, just, you know, don't actually send them here. So Ron DeSantis can't do that. That's not okay. But here you have the mayor of New York City who's busing the migrants that he doesn't want into other small towns across the state who are not equipped to deal with this, who did not sign up for this. None of this was done with any warning, according to local officials. Um, about two dozen illegal aliens landed at a motel and colony in the middle of the night. Another five dozen were sent to Albany hotels. Um, in fact, Adams reportedly sent buses of migrants into colony even after a judge had approved an emergency order that was supposed to block New York City from transferring illegal aliens into the town without the town's express approval. A judge approved an emergency order saying you can't do this unless the town approves it. And apparently Mayor, Ad Mayor Adams, who is above the law and doesn't have to listen to a judge, doesn't have to listen to the courts, took it upon himself to bust these folks into colony and dump them at a hotel, regardless of what a court said. So colony supervisor Pete Crummy, Crummy, I believe, Pete Crummy, he's now suing. Here's what he told Fox News this week. Our town of Colony here in upstate New York, we're a suburb of the city of Albany, a sanctuary city, self-professed. And uh, late uh, last weekend, uh, about 5.05 on a Friday of Memorial Day weekend, I was notified by our county executive that uh, no less than three buses of migrants were heading to Colony, New York, not heading to the sanctuary city of Albany, but actually heading to Colony, New York. And that's when we got going as to uh, seeking uh, relief from the court system uh, until we can sort this out. My position, Carly, in this matter is really the jurisdiction of the mayor of the city of New York. And does he have jurisdiction to unilaterally insert a New York City program into municipalities outside of his jurisdiction and, in addition, in doing so, also violate our local laws in the process? I've been an attorney for 40 years, a judge for 21 I don't believe he has jurisdiction here in the town of Colony. And if he wanted to work cooperatively, uh, he failed to do so. He never notified me or any member of Colony government as he moved 
spirited through the night, bringing a bus of migrants here in the town of Colony at midnight under the cloak of darkness on Memorial Day weekend. Carly, I ask you this. If the plan is so meritorious, why sneak in to the town of Colony? So let me see if I just get this straight here. It is perfectly fine for blue cities to offload their migrants, their influx, all these illegal aliens that have shown up on their doorstep, perfectly fine for these blue cities to offload all of them into neighboring towns, even against court orders. That's totally okay. Just like it is perfectly fine for the feds to stick all these illegal aliens coming across the border onto buses or planes and send them off into towns all across this country with no heads up whatsoever. That's perfectly okay. But when Ron DeSantis sends willing migrants to California that supposedly wants to welcome them with open arms, according to everything that they have ever said, that's suddenly a bridge too far. And we're supposed to actually believe that all of these Democrat politicians that have pushed illegal immigration and open borders now for years, that they actually care about migrants. When they actually get illegal aliens, When border towns and border states say, okay, fine, you take them. You wanted them, you take them. And next thing you know, all of a sudden they're up in arms and they're complaining about it. We can't take all of these people. We're we're, we're gonna we're gonna press kidnapping charges against you. Or when the first thing that Mayor Eric Adams does after claiming about what a sanctuary New York City is, is to bus illegal aliens out of his town. And shove him, shove, shove them into into neighboring areas in the dead of night against court orders that say he can't actually do that. When you're just trying to shuffle off the very problem that you invited, starts to look an awful lot like a political ploy. See, I don't think that leftists actually believe this is a tenable situation. I don't think that a lot of these politicians actually think that open borders is a great idea. I just think that the problem never actually hit them before this, at least not in the way that it currently is. I think that this was a pandering line that they spit out on stages to score political points with certain voter bases. And back when that's all it was, back when that was the biggest risk that they had to take. I mean, you know, California has had its share of illegal immigration, but it doesn't have a border in the way that Texas does. And so that wasn't really, that wasn't their issue. Baltimore certainly never had that issue. New York City certainly never had that issue. D.C., Chicago, All of these nice little protected blue cities far away from the border, they didn't have this issue. And when it started landing on their doorstep and they started actually having to put their money where their mouth was, they didn't have any. And they exposed, this has exposed the fraud behind everything that they have ever said. I mean, Eric Adams is floundering so bad that the things that he's saying don't even make sense anymore. Adams, this week, he said that he wants to start placing illegal aliens. Get this. Again, you cannot make this stuff up, y'all. He says he wants to start placing illegal aliens. Remember all those people with identities and backgrounds and criminal records and family relationships that we can't actually vet and verify all of those people? He wants to start placing them in private homes and paying people who are hard up for cash in Joe Biden's garbage economy, to take in these migrants into their private residential homes. Here's Adam's great plan. It is my vision uh, to take the next step to this, to go to the faith-based uh, locales, and then move to uh, private residents. Uh, they are residents who are suffering right now because of economic challenges. They have spare rooms. Uh, they have locales. And if we can find a way to get over the 30-day rule and other rules that government has in, in its place, we can take that $4.2 billion, $4.3 it may be now, that we potentially have to spend, and we can put it back in the pockets of everyday New Yorkers, everyday houses of worship, instead of putting it in the pockets of corporations. And some of those corporations come from outside our city. So first the churches, and then people's private residence. 
I mean, this is unbelievable, y'all. You have the New York City mayor actually standing up there with a straight face saying, look, we filled up all of our hotels and we're going to start filling up all of the churches. And then Frank and Susan, we expect you to rent out that spare third bedroom. Kids gone off to college. We know you're struggling to pay for eggs. We're going to send this migrant family to you. I hope you like them. By the way, could be a good guy could be a mass murderer. We don't know. We're not even sure what his actual name is. We're just going with what he told us at the border. Have no clue. But uh, here's a check for a few hundred bucks. <clears throat> Thanks. That's Eric Adams' great plan. This doesn't even make sense. This is, this is falling apart faster than Hillary Clinton's face. This is unbelievable. Of course, it's not clear whether Adams actually plans to open up his home to illegal aliens. He lives in Gracie Mansion. It's the official house of New York City mayors, by the way. Looks like it might actually have some space. Check this thing out. I don't know. I kind of feel like maybe he's got a room or two to spare. It'll be interesting to see how many illegal aliens he opens his home up to. He also owns a brownstone in Brooklyn, by the way. It's the one that he was cited by his own city for a rat infestation last year. So, um, I don't know. Maybe that one, maybe that one's been condemned. Maybe you can't actually go in that. I don't know. Um, but it, it seems to me like, you know, if he's, if he's cleared out his little rat problem, maybe he should, uh, graciously open up his home free of charge to all of these illegal aliens. Has anybody asked him? Anybody asked him who's staying in his in his posh brownstone in Brooklyn? I'm just I'm just curious. Because apparently if you don't comply with all of this, you're just a gigantic bigot. On top of urging poor people to take in migrants for a paycheck like some, you know, border town Airbnb or whatever, Adams is now suing 30 counties in New York for refusing to take the migrants that he says his city can't handle. The state or the suit is uh, asking the state Supreme Court to nullify nearly three dozen emergency orders that currently block New York City or supposed to from sending migrants to their towns without the consent and approval of local officials. You know, like the kind in Colony that Adams is just flat out ignoring. Apparently about 30 different locales all across New York have said, look, we're not taking these people and you can't just come dump them. We don't have the resources. We don't have the ability. And you're not just going to come shuttle them into our backyard, dump them on our front porch and wave sayonara. That's not how this works. So you can't do that. And they've actually gotten judges to sign off on emergency orders that say that. But Adams doesn't like that. He wants to shift his problem, the problem that he invited to his own town, over onto other people. For example, Onondaga County and the town of Salina had filed lawsuits last month after they found out about New York City's plan to house up to 200 migrants at the Candlewood Suites Hotel in Salina. These are tiny suburbs, by the way, people. These are not adjacent to New York City. These are small locales, residential areas that don't want, first of all, don't want a whole bunch of migrants that the system can't actually support, uh, that, that have no jobs and who would have to send their children to overloaded schools but who also don't want a whole bunch of people whose background checks and criminal records have not been vetted because they can't be. They don't want that in their town, and neither would the vast majority of people. So New York City is suing them for not taking them. The city is saying that the towns cannot stop New York City from sending migrants to hotels that have consented to take them. The hotels are consenting because New York City is offering to pay them above market price for the rooms, and they're going to pay room and board for migrants for four months. Thank you, taxpayers. Uh, but after that, these towns will have a massive homeless crisis on their hands if these people don't move on before that. This is the problem that you're creating. And New York City doesn't actually know what to do. They're facing a crisis, again, completely of their own making. And my, my word to them would be figure it the heck out. Or maybe change your tune on the open border illegal immigration policies that you've been pushing for years. Eat a little bit of crow which I know they're not going to do, but eat a little bit of crow and fess up that this crap isn't working out for you and it probably hadn't been working out for border towns in Texas for years. You just didn't care until that town became you. And don't push it over on these little suburbs. Unbelievable. The hypocrisy, the double standards. Again, I'd be loading up jumbo jets, y'all. 
A few dozen migrants plopped in Martha's Vineyard, 17 sent to a Catholic church outside of Sacramento. No, sir. I'm sending you every single one that we've got on an express lane. They'll be there tomorrow. That's what I'd be doing. Speaking of, by the way, of stupid lawsuits, and I'll leave you with this one because it's kind of funny. At least I think it's funny. I don't know. Uh, Apparently leftists are doing all kinds of things that they think is very serious, but I find hilarious because uh, they're stupid. The Big Apple, New York City is also, while they're suing all of these towns for not taking the migrants that New York City asked for but then decided that they couldn't handle, while they're doing that, they are also suing Hyundai and Kia over a rash of car thefts thefts because, uh, (laughs) get this, New York City says that the cars are too easy to steal. It's Hyundai and Kia's fault. It's the car manufacturer's fault that the cars are too easy to steal. It's not left-wing policies, oh no. It's not the rampant crime that's been allowed to thrive in these neighborhoods. It's not the the social welfare policies that have created cycles of dependency and poverty and desperation that lead to crime. It's not all of that. It's not the imploding education system that just uh, uh, forces children to turn to lives of crime because they can barely read at a second grade level by the time they graduate high school. None of that. This is not liberals' fault. This is not left-wing policies' fault. None of that. This is the car manufacturer's fault that all of these little juvenile criminals are running around stealing cars. Reuters reports that New York City and several other major cities have sued Hyundai and Kia over thefts, including Baltimore, Cleveland, Milwaukee, San Diego, and Seattle. Just uh, bastions of success and uh, hygiene and, you know the quality of human life these places are. In a complaint filed in Manhattan federal court, New York faulted the automaker's failure from 2011 to 2022 to install anti-theft devices called immobilizers on most of their cars, making them, quote, nearly unique among automobile manufacturers. New York said that this has opened the floodgates to vehicle theft, crime sprees, reckless driving, and public harm. Exacerbated, of course, by TikTok videos showing how to steal cars that lack push button ignitions and immobilizers. Wonder if they're going to sue China for the, uh, the TikTok videos on their communist propaganda site that shows kids how to hotwire cars. Uh, the city said that the number of reported stolen Hyundais and Kias doubled last year, followed by a virtual explosion of thefts in the first four months of 2023, with 977 reported thefts, up from 148 in the same period in 2022. So it's the car manufacturer's fault. Just like it's the gun manufacturer's fault when some mentally ill crazy person pops off and shoots a whole mess of people, it's never actually the criminal's fault. See, leftists can never blame the criminal. It's never the criminal's fault. And the reason that they can't blame the criminal is because they helped create the criminal. They helped create the cesspool of crime that is currently plaguing once great cities all across this country. I love New York City. Genuinely, New York City used to be one of my absolute favorite places to go visit. It is full of art and culture, or at least it should be. History. It's an amazing place. If you've never seen it, it truly is a sight to behold. And the reason that I don't go anymore is because it's a rat-infested sewer that smells like piss and garbage. It's disgusting. It's falling apart. It's utterly trashed. And it's left-wing policies that have gotten it to that point. Left-wing policies have never done a darn good thing for a single city across this country. Our cities are imploding, and they are creating the criminals. That's why leftists love criminals and cannot blame criminals. Because to blame criminals, they would have to blame the policies of their own making that created the problem in the first place. That's the root that it all comes back to. So instead, you blame the car manufacturer. You didn't put anti-theft blocking devices on your vehicles. Because apparently before 2011, people weren't like hot wiring cars and there was not nearly as many carjackings. And, you know, now that there are, it's, it, it's because the automobile maker made the car too easy to steal. Maybe it's because you guys have lowered penalties for those crimes. I don't know. Maybe it's because you're too busy letting criminals out of jail and giving them a slap on the wrist because you're so afraid of pissing off the social justice groups that scream that this is the targeting of certain minority groups. You're so busy trying to check all of your woke boxes 
that you're not keeping your own population safe. You're not keeping crime in check. You're not deterring criminals. And then you're not doing anything to correct the policies that have created the social justice ills that led to the crime in the first place. It's just easier to blame the car maker. It's just easier to blame the gun manufacturer. It's easier to blame everybody else. It's easier to just blame these towns that don't want to take all these migrants that have shown up on your doorstep because you said you wanted them, rather than take a look at your own harebrained policies and the garbage that got you here in the first place. And this is what's so incredibly frustrating about people that cannot see through this, because as far as I'm concerned, all of this is as crystal clear and transparent as it gets. This constant blame shifting, this constant looking for somebody else to pin all of this on. If leftist policies worked, then blue cities and places like California would be utopias, and they are falling apart. And if you can't see that, I'm really not sure that there is any help in this world for you. We certainly try our best to point that out here at the Brittany Hughes Show. That's it for today, though. Uh, I'll see you guys back here next Thursday. Um, make sure while you've got a second to head over to Apple Podcasts, hit the subscribe button on the Brittany Hughes Show. That way you won't miss an episode every single Thursday. Also, make sure you subscribe to the Newsbusters podcast with Tim Graham. That one's on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Um, sharehealthcare.com. Sharehealthcare.com if you are interested in an alternative to traditional healthcare coverage that could save you money without violating your conscience. Sharehealthcare.com. The referral code there, make sure you enter that, is MRCTV23. Uh, I will see you guys back here next Thursday for another episode of the podcast. Until then, have a fantastic weekend. God bless. 